Gallet asks, I have a question about permissions. I created a Teams group and I have a document library in it. I want to add people, but do not want to grant permissions to edit the documents. So uh, mainly Word and Excel, only to view them. So I went into SharePoint and changed the document library permissions and added the person to site visitors and then sent the link to join the team. Once he is a team member, he can edit the documents. What am I doing wrong? Can we add people to a team, allow them to post, but not to edit documents? How do I define it? Okay. Guy Joy. Well, okay. <laughs> We've got, we have opinions. I know, I Pace see yourself. you. And I, uh, yeah. I, so yep. first off, respectfully, maybe don't try. Not in this way. Yeah. Uh, because if we're thinking about teams, my favorite, line that I came up, technically it's two lines. If you're in a team, you're on the team. And when you are in a team, you are at the very lowest level, a contributor. That Microsoft 365 group is your security service and it's breaking your memberships up either into owners or members, even a guest is a contributor. So that content is being given to them to edit. Now I hear you, you went to the SharePoint group and you said, okay, I'm gonna make them visitors so they can read, but they can't edit. But that M365 group is giving them edit permissions. Highest level of permission will win. Christy's like, preach girl, preach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they either can't be a member of the team and all the goodness that's happening in the team and only have visitor, which by default is read, not add to, not contribute the content on the SharePoint site. They don't like that solution either. You could put that content in a separate library yeah. on a separate site that is not governed by that M365 group, tab to it, give people read only access. You could jump through all kinds of hoops. To put you have granular. document level permissions there if you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very but, you're, but you're gonna drive yourself crazy well, doing it. Yeah. But yeah. but that's that's the thing. It's like the I mean historically with this, I mean even before Teams existed, and you had this problem with share with SharePoint uh, as an internet solution. But to your point, mm -hmm. don't mess with the defaults because it causes so many problems. If you try to do that, you're just gonna mess it up and it's gonna make that that team unusable um because yeah. you know it has that default setting uh, with the teams microsoft adopted what was with yammer now at viva engage a very flat hierarchy around permissions the idea was if i'm part of a team i'm there to collaborate get out of the way yes. of yourself of collaborating now that's why you um, do have things like sensitivity labels um, yes. that you can go and employ that usage. And so even though I might have access, if there's a content that's above my pay grade in sensitivity label, I might not be able to open it. I would get denied for that. But I mean, my answer is that that's how I've gotten around that exact same thing is that you go and create a non-036 Vive group, an unlinked SharePoint site with its library, put all the permissions in place that you want, you can add that into the files. You can add that in as a tab. So you can have it available through your team, but then it's separate from the auto provisioned SharePoint libraries and site, you know, that, that is built when a team is created. It's separate from that. Yeah. I Stands always apart. ask. I always ask, yeah. what's the scenario that they're trying to do here? Because, you know, you might find that mm -hmm. it's not teams that you necessarily need to have for that particular scenario. They're trying to do the the round hole, square box or vice versa, because you never uh -huh. know, you know. There are lots of different scenarios as to why. But as we say, you know, teams is the place where we come to do. It is our working place. It is our kind of our project type place, whether that's an event or it's a it's a. So when you're going in and you're doing it in a to do place, no matter what you send, into that channel if you're sending an email in or you're sending documents or you're dropping it in it's it's that to do place so when you're bringing them in on that security group it's then going to be really important that you can all work together <clears throat> so when you're trying to use a scenario where you don't want them to work on stuff 
and you're kind of using it more if you're just using it more as an information channel where you're pushing things into it that's a very different way of using teams and it may not be the right way you might be choosing the wrong solution for what you want to do because it always comes down to that scenario um and, and so when you're trying to you know to me when you say i'm trying to take away all the permissions for someone in the back end you, the way that you're using Teams is not necessarily um, the, for the, the right for that scenario. So then what do we do to look at a different scenario? Yes, you could do the drop in another SharePoint or a whatever, but, um, you know, how can we give you something potentially that will work? <laughs> so I had yes. more, a lot more questions because it's not necessarily always the best way to go. Well, and one of my questions when... as well. Oh, go ahead, Joey. I was going to say a good question to ask yourself or to ask the audience, like if this is a mandate coming from someone else is, is it a breach of security for people to have edit access to these or you just don't want them to? Mm -hmm. If it's a breach of security, then you need to figure it out. And as Christy said, use the right tool or as Christian pointed out, the right combination of solutions mm -hmm. to do yeah. what you need to do. If it's just a... Yeah, it could be maybe you're putting your corporate templates and they're going in there and you don't want them to have edit right. Then maybe you're not setting them up correctly as a template so that when they, get, you know, they're not going over the top of them. Or, you know, there are different reasons why you might use Teams. Um, and mm -hmm. it's very hard to know without us really diving into it because you might have the wrong file type in there. Sure. Maybe you need to mark them as read only so that they're saving them as another version. Or, you know, there's lots of other things you could do on a document level. Um, and wow. could that not be then on a SharePoint internet site, for example, where they go to and you've got web parts and feeds and you can have commenting mm -hmm. instead of using Teams for that same sort of thing? Yeah. Well, it goes yeah. back, again, using the right tool to solve the right problem. Yeah. Like, uh, again, if, if it all it is, is if it's a, a um, because I've done this, uh, you know, having run, you know, PMOs, shared services teams where we have our methodology, our templates, and only the PMs had yeah. access to that. People had read access, they had visibility, but yeah. only those that had that other role for that content. Again, mm -hmm. the way that a team and a, a group is generated with all these linked assets, don't mess with the simple, the simple flat permission structure of that. Mm -hmm. Do something on top of that, manage by exceptions instead of trying to change the rules. Mm -hmm. Yes. That will just cause all sorts of problems. And um, as people come and but, go in but, that group as well, it's just going to get messier course. and messier it's because very it's manual. Oh, well, the, the other pain. thing is that there are <laughs> scenarios, and there are third party oh. tools. There's actually like I, this scenario sounds, it made me think of like secure rooms. You know, so for mm. secure collaborations, like if I'm doing a negotiation, if I'm a realtor, and I've got the buyers, the sellers, the financiers on, on that. I want them to have read-only access to different things. Want to control who has, I mean, the, and there are solutions specifically for that. So this, mm -hmm. I, I mean, again, it goes back to the beginning. Like, what are you trying, are you trying, to, trying do to do where you're trying what's to your break? Motivation? The, yeah, what's your motivation? What's my motivation here? <laughs> what my, I motivation? You know, acting, are we supposed to have motivation? Acting, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an actor. <laughs> oh I, what's interesting though so we come at this from very similar perspectives and, but we we've been doing this and trying to help people through these scenarios for a long time it hurt me a little bit when I saw the announcement last week that SharePoint was 23 right I've only been yeah. in the game for about 16 years now but it's similar conversations for 16 years about trying to have the right permissions on the right content, the right way in a way that the management streamlined. And that's the, that's the trick, right? To make sure it's as simple as possible, but also with the right level of security in place. I, I'm, I've only been involved in 19 of those years, so. <laughs> I saw Mark Cashman's, you know, diagram on SharePoint and I went, okay, at what point did I really come in to this? Uh, and it was around sort of the 2000 and 2006 was when I really kind of kicked in hardcore, like hardcore uh, into it was, yeah, yeah, back in the day. 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 Uh, 
uh, thank you for bringing up the Cashman diagram and making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome.